Philippians, the third chapter, and two verses, 13 and 14. This is Southwest number one. We stand and read the word of God. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of what's going on, there is a God that's able to see us through. Regardless of what has transpired in our life, God is able to turn the clock back. God is able to pick us up out of the valley. He's able to heal our bodies no matter what medical science says. No matter how the enemy attacked us uh, with his conspirators, God is able. Is he able? Uh, so Brother Paul said here, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And the Lord had the blessing to the reading of his word. Come on, repeat after me. Say, looking forward with concentration. I'm going to say it again, looking forward with concentration, regardless of what the enemy has set for us, regardless of how we are outnumbered. Brother Paul here, in his writing, he possessed uh, unusual ability. Brother Paul was somebody before and after. He had the ability to soar into the spiritual height one moment and then descend immediately into the valley of intensely practical. Uh, Brother Paul had made his point concerning the necessity of a personal experience uh, with Jesus Christ as a prerequisite to obtaining a righteous standing before God, being equipped for the problem that arises in the world and possessing complete confidence and assurance concerning the world to come. Uh, the relationship, the relationship Brother Paul had with Christ assured his forgiveness and his daily fellowship with the Lord gave him resources for living each day triumphantly. Uh, no one he said, let her kill it, but the spirit makes a lie, but I can, I can. Regardless of how tight uh, the circumstances get, regardless of how high mountains become or how deep the valleys are, regardless of how the enemy outnumber me, regardless of his sophisticated weapons, it's nice to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Am I right, somebody? So this versatile apostle immediately assures uh, his friends at Philippi that he knew that he had not yet completely arrived in the business of Christian growth. Uh, he assured them, however, that he was striving every day to reach the goal Christ had for him. And when he turned him about on the Damascus Road, am I right, somebody? And uh, he turned him about, started him in another direction. It, it, it's difficult for us uh, to realize the strength that Paul possessed as leader of the persecutor of the Christian or the saints. Uh, had the battle been merely a human battle, Paul and his followers would have been successful in stamping out this new movement. But, but, but it was not a human battle. God was standing within the shadows and keeping watch over his own when, when the lion went forth to devour the sheep, God touched the lion 
and made him a timber lamb. The Lord had a great purpose in mind for Paul when he saved him. No matter what you say, some things are divinely strategized. Uh, you look on the outward surface, but God had another plan from the nucleus. God can make a bad situation a pleasant situation. Oh, bless his name. Reaching God's goal for his life, this involves several steps. Want to know? Want to tell you? Now, don't be discouraged. Don't see it out of sort. But in order for us to get where God intends for us to get, there are steps. There are steps and there are transitions and there are ups and downs and disappointment. And Satan throws in booby traps to deter us and wipe us short of our goal. Am I right, somebody? Therefore, being justified by faith into this grace wherein we stand, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which was given unto us. Tell it all, yeah. And so Brother Paul here, and he states, forgetting the past. And so Paul uses sharp and decisive language in writing about his past experience and life. And he had mingled emotions when he looked back over the things that had happened in his life. And he began to elaborate them in light of present and future. How much of the past, somebody asked, should we remember? Then you should remember how you got where you are. You should remember who brought you to where you are. You should remember that who extended your life. You should remember who brought you up and who brought you out. David said, he brought me up out of a horrible pit. He established my going. He made a way out of no way. Say it. And my mother taught me that by him I live. By him I move, by him I have my existence. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, the enemy would have destroyed me. Say so yeah. it. But I got a conviction that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody mobilize me. Like Jesus, out of the valley of despair, out of the rain of tender, God will see me through. Say it, say it. There are many things we want to hold in mind because they said and motivating factors. They said facing elements of the future and motivates us to approach new situations. Experience often is the best teacher. Sometimes experience is the only teacher. Tell it all yeah. And on the other hand, some things must be forgotten completely. And we have, are going to have a mental stability. And we're going to 
joy, the spiritual dynamics, and the Paul's determination to forget the past was a part of his resolve that he would never rest or relax as he faced the future. He would not allow any memory of failure to bring depression. But in the midst of my cellars of trouble, in the midst of my storm crowd, in the midst of my conspirators, there's a small ray that penetrates the crowd and tell me to go ahead. Say it! Jesus said, go ahead, regardless of trials, regardless of tribulation, regardless of the storm cloud, I hear a small voice, so let your conversation be without covetousness, for Jesus said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I can boldly say, God is And with this thought fixed on the goal, we can't look back. Whatever past has been, God wants us to make certain that it'll never hinder us. Say, yeah, you got to remember Paul's testimony. Paul said, because of my inability to function, I sought the Lord to move my problem or to eradicate it. And I got an answer. Whatever seems to bother me, my grace, my grace is sufficient. Sometimes our previous sins may have left us such, such a deep scar on our souls that it seems we can never move them. Our memory keeps reflecting. Our attitude should be that we have repented of our sin and we prayed for the grace of God. Say it. For the grace of God that bringeth deliverance has appeared to all men, teaching us the denying of ungodly and worldly lusts. We should live solely, righteously, godly in this present world. I heard Paul say, the letter kill it, but the spirit makes a lie. That strengthens me. I can climb a mountain. I can do hardness. I can weather the storm. I got Jesus. And that's enough. Yeah, I walk through the valley and the shadows of death. I fear no evil. For he walked with me and he talked with me. He tells me. And the joy that I feel, and we join in there. No other has ever known. Tell God, yeah, say yeah. Thank you, thank you for the pause, pictures. Enthusiasm for life as reaching for us. The expression of a racer as 
it goes hard. Follow finish line. He has his eyes on nothing but to go. He calls for the very air. His head is forward. His body is bent toward the goal. He flaps out for the finish line. Not yet. I'm <laughs> 